Hello everyone. Good morning. First of all, warm welcome to OIC training by Unogix. In this video, we'll see how to build a FPDA callback service in OIC. In the previous two integrations, we've seen how to build an FPDA automation service. And uh, in the previous video, we've seen how to take care of the prerequisites required for a callback service. Okay, so to receive a callback from ERP Cloud, we need to take care of uh, uh, some prerequisites. And I've covered that in the previous video. So the user that, that, that you will use to load the file into ERP Cloud and to receive the callback from ERP Cloud needs to have certain roles and privileges. And there is also a requirement to create a CSF key. So I've covered those aspects or the prerequisites of callback service in the previous one. Have a look at that video before you watch this. In this video, we'll see how to build a FPDA callback service in OIC. So as I mentioned in the, in the FPDA main service uh, video, callback is not mandatory. So you can kick off FPDA process without even enabling a callback. But uh, most clients would ask for some sort of a post-processing to happen. Like some of some of the clients ask us to send a date, to send a notification, uh, confirming whether the file is loaded successfully or not. And uh, we might also have to do certain other post-processing actions like archiving the data file or receiving the log and output files from ERP and putting them to log location. So such post-processing actions, which need to be executed after the file is successfully loaded in ERP Cloud, will usually go into the callback service. So we build a callback service to take care of all those post-processing actions. Okay, let's go ahead and build the callback service. Log into Oracle Integration Cloud instance. And for this callback service, we need FTP connection and we need ERP Cloud connection. We have created both of them in the previous video, wherein we have built the FPDA automation service refer that video to create the connections. We will use the same, reuse the same connections created. Okay, go to integrations. So we already have <coughs> the FPDA FTP connection and FPDA ERP connection. We will use these connections in the callback service. Go to integrations, create a callback service and use app-driven orchestration style. You can call it as, you know, geeks, FPDA, GL daily rates, callback service. Okay, put it in FPDA package, create the integration. And the first step uh, in this service is to receive callback from, FP, uh, from ERP Cloud. So change the layout to horizontal, use the ERP Cloud connection to receive the callback. Let me call it as receive FPDA callback from ERP and use the second option, receive callback upon completion of FPDA bulk input job submitted via another integration. And this another integration is our FPDA main integration that we created in a previous video. And we need to select, uh, select the import process here. So select import and calculate daily rates and select the download options as always. This determines when the log and output files need to, be, need to be downloaded. So should it be downloaded always or only when, only in the case of failure, do you want to log, download the log files? Okay, select always, that should be fine. And click next, click on done. So you are receiving the call back here. And what do we want to do uh, in, the, in the callback service? So we want to archive the data file. First up, we want to move the file from input to archive so that the file will not be processed again. 
So to do that, click on the plus icon, use FTP connection to move the file from input to archive. So we can say archive, we can call the endpoint as archive data file. Select move a file operation and select the directory path. Okay, so hard code the paths. You can get the uh, you can get the, the store the directory path and the file name from uh, in a lookup and pull it from there. But uh, for now, but but since it's a demo session, I'll just hard code the directory name and the file names. So pick up the FPDA zip file from input directory and move it to the archive directory. So let's go into archive. and set up the target file name and take this box so that if this if this file already exists in the archive directory it will be overwritten so here we are using gl daily rates interface.zip so in case the data file a name itself is unique so when the data source spaces a file they usually append a timestamp or something which will make the file name unique so if when we are moving the file from input to archive, we're not changing the file name. We will use it as is. Click on next and click on that. And yeah, here we are archiving the data file. And we also want to, so what else do you want to do? Uh, what else can we do? We can, download the log and output file. So when you receive the callback here from ERP Cloud, you will get a file reference. And that file reference is nothing but a zip file with the log and output files generated in ERP Cloud. So we will down, we will write that a zip file to the logs location. So in this GL daily rates, you have a logs location, logs folder. So let's copy this folder and let's write the logs file. Uh, let's write the log logs a zip file to this location. And we'll use again FTP location, uh, FTP adapter for that. And we'll call it as write log files to SFTP. It's a write file. Select the output directory. And the file name pattern, you can use a use a pattern here. So you could you could use a percentage sequence percentage uh, so that uh, Every time a file is placed, uh, a unique number will be generated. So you can say log sequence, logs percentage sequence percentage for zip, or you can also use a timestamp as well as an as a pattern. So the way you use these patterns is this. So you say Oracle percentage sequence percentage ICS.txt. If you use this pattern, the sequence will be replaced with one, two, and three, and so on. Okay, so you can. You can say logs a uh, sequence dot zip, or you can also append the timestamp if you want. Say for example, you can say you can copy this yymmdd hhmmss. So copy the a uh, date and a timestamp, and this h also in caps. Okay, and percentage dot set. Click on next. I don't want to upload a sample file because I'm already getting a zip file as an input uh, when I receive the callback, and I'll just write that entire zip file uh, to the S to the logs location. Click on done. And in the map, I'll pass in the file reference as input to the write file operation. So you receive uh, you receive a bunch of fields from ERP Cloud as part of a callback uh, as part of receiving a callback, and one of them will be the ICS file reference, which is nothing but 
a zip file with all the log and output files. Okay, map that. That should be fine. We have already uh, given a name to it, to the log file, so that should be fine. And you can also probably send out a notification if you want. Uh, but in, in one of the previous videos, I've shown you how to configure a notification and send it out. Okay, so we'll not get into it. So uh, what, what have you done here? We have built a callback service to receive FPDA callback from ERP Cloud. And what are we doing in this integration? We are archiving the data file so that it, get, it doesn't get loaded again into ERP Cloud. And we are downloading the log and output files from ERP that we are receiving from ERP and we are dumping them to the log location. And you could also probably send, send this uh, log and output files. So you could probably send the zip file as an attachment in the notification. Okay, so let's activate the tracking. Let's enable tracking and then activate the service. And select the request ID. Or maybe that, that could be a repetitive element, so that might result in an error. So we'll, we'll use our document ID and we'll use the summary status. And we'll also use a file name as a third reference. A third tracking identifier, save the integration. Activated. <clears throat> so the callback service is active now. So we go back to the data file uh, that we have loaded earlier and let's make one small change in there. Let's change the exchange rates uh, let's change the date to tomorrow. We have already loaded exchange rates for today. So let's load in the rates for tomorrow. Zip the file and place it in input directory. Okay, and we will, uh, the way we test the flow uh, flow now is, uh, we will kick off the main service. So this is a main service that we have configured, FPDA main service, and this is a callback service. So this main service will pick up the file and load it in ERP cloud. And ERP cloud after processing the file will raise ERP bulk, uh, bulk ERP import bulk data business event. And this callback service, would have subscribed to that ERP import bulk data business event with the import job applied as a filter, import and calculate daily rates. And uh, so after the file is processed successfully in ERP Cloud, ERP Cloud raises a business event. And since uh, this integration is subscribed to that business event, this integration gets kicked off automatically. And in the previous video, I've explained uh, how to create a CSF key so that ERP Cloud can invoke the callback service. So this callback service should get automatically triggered, which should archive the data file, move it from input to archive, and it should also log the uh, log the output uh, log and output files from ERP Cloud to the logs location. Okay, let's go ahead and test the flow. Invoke the main service now. Submit now. Instance is generated. So go to integrations and you will be able to see that, yes, the FPDI, uh, you know, Geeks FPDI GL daily rates uh, main service is triggered now. Okay, and it completed successfully. 
if you go into ERP cloud instance, and if you go to the monitor process screen, you should be able to see the loader running in there. You could see that the loader is triggered. So it, it has triggered a jail job to upload the file to UCM. A second jail job is triggered to load the records from file into interface table. And then the import job is triggered now to pick up the data from interface table and load them into a base tables. And after this, an upload job will be kicked off, which will download the log and output files of all these four jobs generate a zip file and it will upload that zip file to UCM. So you will see an, you should see an upload job getting kicked off. Yeah, upload interface job and out, interface error and job output files. And if you want to verify whether the exchange rates are loaded for tomorrow or not, go to setup and maintenance. Go to the global search. Search for manage daily rate stars. Go to daily rates. Enter from currency as USD to currency as INR. And the rate date is tomorrow because we already laid loaded rates for today in the previous testing. Search for the rates and you could see that the exchange rates are loaded. And we have loaded in the exchange rate for corporate rate type. You could see the exchange rate that we have loaded. So this is matching with what we have loaded in the file, what we have passed in the file. 71.55 is the exchange rate. So this means, yes, the file is loaded successfully. Now, coming back to the integration monitoring section, if you do a, a, do a refresh here, you should see that the UnoGeek's GL daily rates callback service is triggered automatically. So this is the main service that, that picked up the file and loaded it in ERP cloud. After the file is loaded, ERP cloud raised ERP import bulk data business event. And this a callback service is, has subscribed to that business event. So this got triggered automatically, the callback service, FPDA GL daily rates callback service. And it also completed successfully. So you see the document ID. And what did we do in this callback? We have moved the file from input to archive directory and we have written the log files to the SFTP location. So let's see if those two actions are done. So in the input directory, I no longer see the FPDA file. So that means yes, the file has been archived. So if you go to archive directory, you should see the file. Let's do a refresh. You should see the data file. And if you go to the logs directory, refresh it, you should see the logs.zip file. If you download this logs.zip file, it is nothing but a collection of all the log and output files of the jobs that are kicked off in ERP cloud to load in the exchange rates file. We have seen four or five jobs getting kicked off, right? The, the loader job, transfer file job, and the import job. So all those jobs, log and output files will be included as part of the zip file, and it is sent across as input to the callback service. So you see the log files, and you also see the data file that was loaded. Okay, so this is how you can build an FPDA callback service in OIC to implement a post-processing action such as archiving data file, uh, downloading the log and output, output files and putting them to log location or sending out a notification. Okay, in the next video, I'll, I'll show you how to use a publisher uh, and subscriber uh, style integrations. You have two uh, integration styles called publish to OIC and subscribe to OIC. But those two integration styles can be used to implement a publisher subscriber mechanism in OIC. So we'll, we'll see them in the next couple of videos. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. In case you are interested in Oracle integration cloud training offered by UnoGeeks, please call us on this number or send a WhatsApp message. You can also email us on info at greatunogeeks.com. If you are interested in checking out the course content, uh, please do visit our website. Thank you.